Well, friends, the great patriot Patrick Henry announced those incredible words, give me liberty or give me death. What a lot of you don't realize is that was founded upon his love for God and his knowledge of the Word of God. We as Americans, we have so much to be thankful for regarding our historic liberties and freedoms, the foundations that God has given us. And when you think about the gospel being preached, now listen, a lot of people don't want to hear about this, but it is true. Wherever the gospel has been preached, the culture's been changed. And when the gospel is preached, people are set free. And those nations throughout history who have decided to throw off the paganism of the past and invite Christ to be the leader, the Bible to be their manual, as it were, of government, have prospered throughout all of human history. The rights of women, for example, child labor laws and the love and the care for children, worship, for example, and the freedoms to do so. Even in America and where the gospel has been preached, there is the freedom of those and for those to worship who don't even worship the God of the Bible. How did that happen? By the founding fathers embracing biblical freedom. It's remarkable. This is not a country whereby you must be a Christian. It is a country that is announcing you can believe or not believe and have the same religious freedoms based upon the gospel truth. These opportunities for you and I to take the gospel to the end of the earth is a privilege, it is an honor, and it's a joy at a time like this. Jesus himself said, go ye therefore into all the world and preach this gospel. And that's what we're all about. So grab your Bibles and follow me in a message titled, Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death. And I pray that you'll be blessed by that. And as we do study this, remember this, that liberty and freedom really comes from the Bible. God has put that in your heart as a human being. My dear friend, you are not an animal. You have not been created in some animalistic meaning or manner. You have been created in the image of God and you desire to be free. You desire liberty. So let's dive into it now as we look at give me liberty or give me death. and the freedom and the liberty to gather together today safe and free, but we scarcely remember how it came about. Against all odds, the greatest power on earth put us in her sights. And how in the world does General George Washington lose most battles fought and winds up winning the war, but by the hand of God? Jesus Christ gave us liberty by going to the cross and there, thank God, dying once. He rose again from the grave to give us eternal life. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. Liberty was bought by Jesus. Freedom's in the heart of a human. God placed it there. But in a fallen world, freedom and liberty is on the other side of war. And our founding fathers knew that. And our pilgrim fathers knew that. But we're talking about memorials today. When I talk about the meaning of a memorial, this is what I mean by that. By noticing and reckoning the importance of what happened in history. Memorial. Things have happened in your life. Every single one of us have a memorial. Some of them are dark and, and gray and dented and broken and strange looking, almost uh, uh, rusted. And, and we'd rather not go there. Those are memorials that are tombstones to us. And I get that. We all have those. Then there's memorials where there's been opportunity in your life and things have happened in your life. And God has done something in your life. There's memorials, believe it or not, I, I would argue with you today that's happening in your life right now, but you're not recognizing them. That's happened to me many times. And it's happening to you, and it will happen to you, and it will continue to happen in my life. And you might say, well, that's, you know, that's kind of heavy stuff. Well, let me show you how heavy, uh, heavy can look. So I want to sh show you some photos here. So you guys, this is the city's... Uh, symbol, Chino Hills. 
That is an ancient oak tree. It's considered to be the oldest oak tree uh, throughout Chino Hills and Chino Hills State Park. Uh, I can walk to it very briefly from my house. I've taken many men from this church up there. Uh, I live in a 1,500 square foot house, so it's not big, but it's not small. My entire home will fit underneath that house. I mean, that tree or that tree house. Um, but listen, let me tell you why that is a memorial to us. And we were blessed because, you know, we were here before it was a city. And uh, we, didn't, we didn't petition the city to make it our, our uh, motto or our, our city emblem. I was just happy to find out that they did. But the fact of the matter is that when Lisa and I moved out here, uh, we had two little kids, Rebecca and Ashley. And when we moved from Costa Mesa, uh, that was on a Saturday. And uh, for the first time, we woke up in Chino Hills. And I live just about two miles from here, just as the crow flies straight toward the hills. And uh, when we woke up on that Sunday morning, uh, we thought we had woken up in in hell. I, why? Because I had never in my life, I was born in San Diego, lived uh, close enough to the ocean and OC. I had, I had grown accustomed to the smell of salt water. When you leave salt water air and you move out here to the smell of what the dairymen call money, I call it stink. We thought that we had fallen off the end of the planet. And I got to tell you, Lisa and I, we didn't know what in the world is God doing. We had no vision. We had no uh, manifestation from God. We heard no voice resounding move to Chino Hills. Technically, Chino Hills didn't even exist yet. This is county land, and it had no name. But you know what? Lisa and I picked up our two little girls and walked up this hill and there was no Peyton Drive in those days. We walked up and stood underneath that tree. And see how clear it was the day that we took that picture? Uh, we stood there and we stretched out our hands. Church family, listen, we didn't know what we were doing. We had no intel. We had no secret insights. But for whatever reasons, we lifted up our hands. We were holding our daughters. We'd have them lift up their hands. We didn't know what we were doing. And we said something nuts. We said, God, if you want to deliver this valley into your hands, Lord, here we are, send us. And if you want to take the word out beyond those mountains, here we are, send us. We didn't even know why we said it. Lisa's here. You can ask her later. So I don't believe you. Ask her. <laughs> we didn't know what was going on. We didn't get emotional about it that day like I am right now. Went back to the house and we started to make a home out of it. And over some years, we were lonely and looking for Christians in this part of the nation. <laughs> and um, God took a Bible study of, of uh, three couples, and he just started adding people to it and adding people to it, and it started growing and started growing. And I had my career at Baxter uh, Health Care uh, in biomedical engineering. I was having a great time, by the way. I'm, Sometimes I still miss that job. Um, I had an awesome job. I was going to retire from that job. And um, God had another plan. But it didn't come. The answer didn't come so easy. It's painful. And as it goes along, the, home, the Bible study's growing. I told Pastor Chuck Smith, I said, you got to get a pastor. It's out of control. <laughs> I've got my job. It's, it's taken up too much of the... We've got like five houses now involved on a Sunday morning with various ministries at various homes. And Lisa, our home, our bedroom is a nursery. <laughs> For real. And Chuck, you got to do something. And uh, Pastor Chuck just stood up and he put his hand on my shoulder and he said, Lord, bless what's happening in Chino Hills. And he walked out of his office and I sat there waiting. <laughs> and his secretary... Stuck, his, stuck her head in the door and she said, can I help you? And I said, I'm just waiting for Chuck to come back. And she said, he went home. <laughs> and uh, two weeks later, I got my ordination certificate from Calvary Chapel, Costa Mesa. <laughs> and I didn't even know what happened. We've never known what we've been doing here. God has done it all along the way. Amen. And the calling, the calling that God gives...
The calling that God gives means that he gives the resources and he gives the power and he, he makes the way. He's the way maker, you know? And in each and every one of our lives, God has established you as a believer to be a memorial. I'm not talking about some old crusty stone memorial. There are places for those. But I'm talking about what Paul spoke to us about, about being living sacrifices to God. Day in and day out. And listen, God help us if we lose sight of that vision. We can't lose sight of that. People have tried over the years to try to make this a normal church, try to make this a normal Calvary Chapel, try to make this a normal gathering. I thank God that, listen, he has interrupted and he has turned over tables and he continues to do that this day and we're happy about that. But my heart goes out to our nation. We're too big to be defeated by any power on earth, still to this day. We're flanked by two great protective oceans. We have neighbors to the north and neighbors to the south that we have ensured would be there in the time of need. And now I look at our country and my heart breaks because I don't recognize much of my nation that I've learned to study in school that I grew up in and what I see on the horizon for my kids and my grandkids. How did we get here? I honestly lay blame at the foot of the pulpit and in the congregation of churches that failed to speak up. Our fathers gave us this nation and we have failed to keep it. We cannot blame anybody for the condition our nation is in right now but our, ourselves. We cannot blame anyone. Well, you know, if somebody would get control of the border, listen, stop that. Well, what about spending? It's out of control. What about the national debt? That's on us. God says, I'm looking for one man to intercede on behalf of a nation. And there's more than one of us here today. But it's not over. I forget who said it a long time ago. I love it. It's not over to the fat angel sings. Isn't that a great song? I love that statement. I <laughs> Can you imagine getting to heaven and there's a fat angel and that's the one? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> but the meaning of a memorial prompts us to ask the question what happened here? Why should this ground be dedicated? Joshua was getting ready to take on the enemy. And on the morning of the battle, early, Joshua sees this soldier. Listen up, everybody. This is a, this will freak you out. Joshua sees somebody in the distance, and it's a soldier. And he's alone. And Joshua, General Joshua, commando, Israeli commando, Joshua, in your Bible, says, approaches him. Can you imagine? And says, are you for us or for the enemy? And the voice came back out of the darkness and said, I am captain of the Lord's hosts. You know what that means, by the way, if you don't know? I am captain of the Lord's armies of heaven. And the Bible says at that, Joshua took off his sandals and bowed down. And the Bible tells us that that manifestation, what is known as the Christophanes, a pre-incarnate appearance of Christ before Bethlehem, led them into battle. It doesn't matter how equipped you are. It doesn't matter how smart and pretty you are. It doesn't matter how savvy you are. Is God doing what he's doing in your life? God has called you to various areas of life. It's the beauty of God. Each of us talented and gifted in different areas. God made no mistake in that. A couple weeks ago, there was, I, told, I mentioned this in passing, but there was a, a world famous musician that was here seeking God there was an actress from Hollywood seeking God what's going on you see the talents that you have they don't bring you satisfaction because they were given to you to give glory to God that's when you rejoice it's like this nation is his and I know this drives educators crazy today Someone's going to tell me, haven't you ever heard of a separation of church and state? Uh, no. 
Where did you hear it from? CNN? Where did you get that from? It's in the First Amendment. Show me the First Amendment. You think there's something on this planet that's separated from God? I agree with Benjamin Franklin. God governs in the affairs of men. God knows. But what happened in this spot? We need to ask that question. For us, in one of our memorials, it's that oak tree. We believe that God is answering our prayer requests still to this day. Today's a monument of that. But what about you? I know this sounds kind of corny, but not to us. My grandkids know about a monument, a memorial. If you go down Pacific Coast Highway, south on PCH, just past Beach Boulevard, you keep going, you're going to go over the Santa Ana River. Just past southbound, past the Santa Ana River, on Highway 101, or Highway 1, you're going to come to Orange Street. It's the first stoplight in Newport Beach. If you hang a right and park your car, and you walk out about 300, uh, 500 feet, there's a volleyball net. See, why are you telling us this? Because I'm going to tell you about a memorial. Why is that a memorial? Why do my grandkids know? When they drive down Coast Highway, why do my kids know? That's where mom and dad met right there. I know as a pastor, I'd love to give you like this great thing about I was serving food to the starving in <laughs> Malaysia and Lisa descended down in a parachute carrying <laughs> Bibles. <laughs> no, she was a cute blonde tan in a bikini, a born again Christian from Anaheim First Baptist Church and a friend of mine that was on my volleyball team uh, playing volleyball in the middle of the day. Uh, he said, hey, Jack, there's a Christian girl right there because I was really down on Christian girls. I'd become a Christian, and then I found out I don't think there's any Christian girls. <laughs> he said, there's one, and I didn't, let, I didn't let her know by any means that I thought she was cute and all that stuff, but um, I'll tell you this, uh, you know, I just thought, why not just go for it? And when Lisa and I met, in, in, in conversationally, in a matter of minutes, our friend said, you know what, come on over to the uh, house tonight. And uh, we'll have some friends over. And so Lisa and I reconnected on that same day. And why waste time, right? I just said, hey, hey, yeah, good to see you. Um, how many, you know, when you get married, how many kids do you want to have? She said, well, first of all, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. And I said, I like that. Well, what about, where would you want to live? And, you know, look, we're Californians. you got to live as near to the water as possible. And so, I mean, I'm telling you right now, again, if you don't believe me, she's sitting here somewhere. She's probably getting elbows by people right now. And we just went through it. We knew everything within, by the, by the time the hour was up, I should have asked her to marry her right then and there, but I waited a couple of months. Uh, but that was a memorial. Who in the world would have thought that the gathering of sand by a volleyball court on Orange Street or Newport would be something that would change the course of history in my life and in my grandkids' lives and in my children's lives? And it's from that meeting that we're friends and we're in the family of God together. Memorials, don't underestimate them. They're happening every day. Open your eyes to see them. God is good. And listen, his Holy Spirit is full of power. Amen. This life is hard enough to live, but God sends us his Spirit's power. Don't ever do your faith walk with Jesus. I'm trying to avoid the word Christianity. It's just been so maligned. Don't try to follow Jesus on your own strength. It doesn't work. Let him take you. Every single, I don't care how big and brawny you are. We need Jesus to carry us. Flat out. Flat out true. Give me liberty or give me death. We have often throughout our history, as Americans anyway, have considered that to be a political statement. Why? Because it came from the heart and from the mouth of the great Patrick Henry, and he is a founding father. And so we have a tendency to box these guys into a compartment whereby uh, they were uh, the founding fathers. They were political. 
But what is thrilling to realize is that they actually became the founders of this nation because they were first spiritual. They knew the Word of God. They studied the Word of God. They rejoiced in the Word of God. And they saw the viability of God's Word to be really the answer to all. When man's heart cries for freedom. So listen, the failure of man today in government, it's all around us. You and I know that. Governments are failing. And they're going to fail. I don't mean to depress you about that, but God is the one who has invented government, but man takes government and turns it into politics. And God's not into politics. God is in to godly government. Righteousness, it's called. So let's not take our liberty and our freedoms for granted, friends. We've done that far too long and look where it's gotten us. By going to the cross, Jesus Christ answered the ultimate tyranny and the ultimate slavery issue that trumps all. And that is he went to the cross to give us liberty. It's in the heart of man. God put it there. It's our desire to be free. Everyone wants to, to be free. Listen, I find it amazing that when a, a teenager is growing up, they come to that point of life where uh, they want to make the decisions, and but they want to be free. Well, listen, the liberty and the freedom is a God-given thing, but it needs to be governed by the Word of God. So put your trust in Christ and he'll carry you all the way through and he'll use your life as you share your faith. Know what it is you believe in, which makes up your faith and then share it. So listen, to help you walk with God, you can always go to jackhibbs.com. Also, you can connect with us at Facebook or Instagram and there we can keep in touch with you and let you know what's coming up next. jackhibbs.com, connect with us there, Facebook and Instagram. God bless you guys until next time. You are watching Real Life with Jack Hibbs. In 1755, George Washington described how he survived an intense battle completely unscathed. With four bullet holes through his coat, two horses shot from under him, and the death of his companions on every side, his life was supernaturally preserved by God. This astounding miracle is just one of 50 found in Susie Federer's riveting book, Miracles in American History. Throughout our history, God has intervened in ways that can only be described as miraculous. Read about 50 such times when inexplicable events turned out to be God's unique blessing on the American people. From the Revolutionary War to the Apollo 13 space mission, find out how God's mercy and the prayers of His people have altered the path of history. Receive Miracles in American History by supporting Real Life Ministries today. To get your copy, visit jackhibbs.com. Select the QR code or call 877-777-2346. Order now. Life is full of fear, doubt, and worry. The more you listen to and see the world today, the easier it is to feel hopeless and helpless. Amidst the confusion, a voice of hope has emerged. The Real Life Network. Founded by Jack Hibbs, the Real Life Network is a free digital media platform, void of the noise of secular media that attack people of faith. Click on the QR code or sign up for free at reallifenetwork.com. Fast forward your faith. Welcome to Real Life Radio with Jack Hibbs. God's Word never will return void. God's Word is spirit, it's power, and it has its effects. God did not give us Bible prophecy to scare us, but to prepare us. You are the light of the world, Jesus said. You are the salt of the earth. How does that happen? Jack Hibbs truly believes we are living in some of the most exciting days in history, which brings some great opportunities to share with the world a powerful, no-nonsense presentation of the gospel to this generation who are searching for answers and truth. Will you stand with us in sharing this message in real and practical ways? We ask that you commit to support Real Life and the teachings of Jack Hibbs with a gift of your choosing. Simply go to jackhibbs.com. And there you can simply follow the instructions of how to give a one-time gift or a recurring gift. 
If you would prefer to call, our toll-free number is 877-777-2346. Again, that's 877-777-2346. And of course, you can write us. Our address is Real Life with Jack Kibbs, Box 1273, Chino Hills, California, 91709. Your gift will be faithfully put to work because it's our desire that through Jesus Christ, you will know real life.